I got a, a, a text this morning from Pastor Daryl, who I also celebrate. Pastor Daryl, if you're watching, it's been awesome to have Pastor Daryl rotating, preaching every other week with me. Uh, amen to that. Yeah, so lots to celebrate today. Well, today was supposed to be Pastor Daryl's day to preach, okay? So I got the text uh, when I woke up, hey, I've been sick all night, I uh, can't preach, you know, here's some ideas. So it's been one of those mornings, right? It's been, it's been one of those days. So God has a very special message for us today, for you guys. Uh, so uh, we do celebrate Pastor Daryl. It's been so wonderful to have him on the team and, and doing the, the every other uh, preaching and so uh, this morning, I am going to preach, but it's going to be a little different. It's going to, it's, I, I, you know, it's, I've had notice since about 8.30 this morning that I'd be doing this. And I was just kind of, you know, talking to my wife about it, and I'm not going to, like, go try to prep a sermon in an hour for you guys. But uh, we, we have talked through, and um, here, we'll see if we can, we're going to, all right, that's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that. So we've been uh, doing a soul rest series for the last two months. And uh, soul rest is just such a big part of what we need uh, it, as Christians today. I mean, our, our culture today, as we talked about, it is so fast-paced. And our culture today, it teaches us, it tells us, we talked last week about all of these things that we need to be whole, to be valuable, to be accepted. And so we looked at these three temptations that Jesus faced from Satan, and they're very similar to the temptations that we face as Christians. There's a temptation uh, to that I am what I do, the temptation that I am what I have, the temptation that I am what others think of me. And this is the ocean that we swim in as fish. I mean, we're born into this ocean, and these things fuel us. We looked at why do we strive? You know, this whole series has been about getting away from strife striving, and we looked at what are our own personal wounds, and what are the things our culture just embeds into us that says, you must have these things to be successful. You must have these things uh, to be accepted. It's so subtle, we don't even know these are the things that are fueling us. Often, until we stop, until we get away, we have the solitude time with the Lord, and we rest. And you ever have that? And then everything bubbles up. <laughs> you get away, and it's, it really is detox. I mean, it really, we are, we are addicted to these things. We're addicted to these waters, and we get away, and then our bodies and our minds and our spirits start to shake a little bit, and we say, where are all of my coping mechanisms <laughs> that make me feel okay? So this is what we've been talking about with spiritual practices and getting away and having solitude time with the Lord. So today we're going to wrap that series up, and we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer this morning. And with the Lord's Prayer, um, it's something that whether you are a churched person or not, whether you are here as a person of faith, a follower of Jesus or not, whether you grew up in the church or not, uh, you have some familiarity with the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is very embedded into our culture. Um, w once you hear it, if you're not familiar with it, you'll go, oh, yeah, I've heard that before. Um, in fact, Alan, can you just put the slide up of it so people can see it and, and kind of jog your memory? Um, I remember watching the first Spider-Man movie back in the day with Tobey Maguire uh, before some of you were born, I think. Uh, <laughs> um, and there's this now really tacky 90s action scene where the Green Goblin shows up in his Power Rangers mask, and uh, there's all these explosions, and, and uh, Aunt May is praying the Lord's Prayer, and he's like, finish it, and you know, there's all these explosions, because she's praying, you know, lead us, uh, to, you know, the, let's see, if we're, if we're, yeah, lead, deliver us from the evil one, that's the part, and so there's, it's like this pop culture thing, that the Lord's Prayer is baked into our pop culture, it's also baked into our church culture. So some of you grew up in churches where you recited the Lord's Prayer perhaps every Sunday. You've got it down. You've got it memorized. You can't remember your kids' names, but you remember the Lord's Prayer. You know, that's always rough when I call, like, my dog one of my kids' names and my kids one of my dog's names. You just know, like, the brain is just all scrambled, right? Right? Can I get an amen? I see some, thank you. At least me and Daniel, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so the Lord's Prayer for some has been memorized, it's been recited, it's been part of liturgy, and I think that is beautiful. Uh, I did not grow up in a tradition like that, and I think that when, uh, when we, so there's an advantage and disadvantage to both. Um, I think when we memorize the Lord's Prayer, or Psalm 23, I think is similar, some of these really powerful passages of Scripture when we memorize them and recite them, they can become kind of just something we say. 
it can become a ritual that loses the meaning of why it became so important to become a ritual. So we're going to do sort of a spiritual practice through the Lord's Prayer this morning as I walk you through the Lord's Prayer. So we're going to give you an opportunity to sit and reflect on each of these lines of the Lord's Prayer. And so it's going to be a bit different. So if you're new, welcome. I told Robert that's how we get you to come back. We're going to, it's going to be different next week. You've got to come back. This is, so we get, you get something special today. You've got to come back next week, okay? All right, so we're going to start with what we always do, though. We have two questions for you. And so, um, again, if you're new, welcome. Uh, we always have a discussion question time during announcements where we get to know each other and have some fun. And then this one, uh, during the sermon at the beginning, it's just to get you thinking. You don't have to know anything about the Bible uh, or Jesus to be able to answer uh, these questions. So I don't know where we're at in the slides. Yeah, you can just put those up, Alan. Thanks. So the first one really is just that question, what is your familiarity with the Lord's Prayer? So I would love to hear a diversity of answers in your group. Like if you're like, I have no idea what that is, just say that. Uh, perhaps you saw the Spider-Man movie I'm talking about, and you're like, yep, I've seen that, you know, or you've seen it in other movies. Maybe there's other pop culture references. Talk about uh, if you grew up with it, if you didn't, what that, what that was like. Just what your familiarity is with the Lord's Prayer. And then this one, you know, if you're new, you might, you'll just have to kind of listen in on this one. Feel free to chime in maybe after you've heard some people uh, share. But I'd love to put you guys on the spot that have been here for the last two months and just share in your group what have been your biggest takeaways uh, from the Soul Rest series. I hope you at least have one. Otherwise, we're going to have to do it all over again. We failed, and we're just going to have to recycle all those sermons again until you have a takeaway. Okay, so uh, take five minutes. We'll get you back in the groups that you are in. Feel free to modify as needed as you've lost some teens, uh, and then we'll come back up and finish the rest of the sermon. All right, with um, question number two up there, your, your biggest takeaway from the Soul Rest series, you know, for me this morning, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting as we're all human, I'm human, we have our plans, you know, we have our plans for how we think a day is going to go, and today is not the plan, right? Like, like I wasn't, I was planning on Pastor Daryl preaching, you know, uh, just, just different moving parts that aren't, you know, LaRonda's gone, just, you know, things like that. And I was able this morning, because of the Soul Rest series, I mean, I'm, I'm preaching these things to myself, you know, when I hear Pastor Daryl preaching these things, I'm, I'm learning and growing just like you are. I'm a part of this culture just, just like you. And I've really tried to let God um, challenge me during these last two months. And I've been uh, consistently on my, my Monday, my Sabbath day off is Monday, and I've been going down to the river near my house, and I sit at the river. And I sit there um, as long as I can. I sit there for an hour, sometimes two hours. And uh, God it's the space where everything settles for me. It's the space where the striving can't reach me. It's the space where stuff bubbles up. My insecurities bubble up, and then God meets me in that space with his love and, and addressing, you know, those insecurities that are in me. And even this morning, I was able to reflect on, able to hear from God, able to think back to this last Monday when I was at the river and God was just showing me some of my life journey these last five years, and it's been a wild five years, and things that were pretty painful that I went through, uh, things that I didn't want to have happen, things that were unexpected, and uh, just, I won't get into all of it here, but there was a rest, there was a rest that can only come from God that was given to me on Monday, that I could sit with that rest and go, God, you are good you love me, and you've been with me this whole time. Like you, you've been doing things that, things that happened five years ago that I'm seeing now that are directly related that I could never have imagined or, or written. And, and this morning, in a smaller way, I think an old version of me, and I still have my human self, I'm still kind of rushing around, and, you know, there's kind of flooded in some ways, but an old version of me this morning um, would have been kind of freaking out, you know, kind of like, oh, I'm worried. How is it going to go? How are people? And, and just having, I told you, you can't learn this from a sermon, right? I, I've said that many times. You can't learn this from a sermon. The soul rest, being with God in that space allowed me to be with him in that space this morning when things were upside down, right? So that's, that's one for me, a big, one of my biggest takeaways from the soul rest series. So I'm wondering in your groups just, um, like, did someone in your group this morning, um, Raise your hand if something good was shared in your, in your group this morning for number two, where you're like, people are sharing stuff, that's okay. 
I'm totally setting you up right now. You guys fell right into my trap. It was beautiful. Okay, so now we know there's something that people want to share, right? Now we know, like, proof. If no one shares, you're liars. Okay, um, so what I want to know, we just take a few minutes. If anybody, you can nominate someone, that's fine. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, or does somebody want to share? Uh, just a brief answer, you know, just a minute, minute or two. It can be real short. It can just be one line. It can be a few minutes. Uh, uh, maybe not a few minutes, maybe a minute. Uh, what your biggest takeaway from this series has been, for those who have been here, I think it'd be cool uh, for us to hear from, from what God has been doing among us. I'm going to have Mario share if nobody else does. So, and no, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> Mario. Uh, anybody want to share? It'd be great to just get like a couple people that want to go. Let's see. Oh, I like that. Okay. You up for that, Danielle? All right. We're going we're gonna to see if these mics don't give us feedback. I'll come back to you. Check this one. There we go. Mic check one, two. Yeah, so for me, it's just the, uh, the idea that we're good enough, that the striving that we do um, is well, at least for me as a human, is about judgment. You know, go, go, going is about making the most of productivity and making sure I'm doing all the things. Um, and I did put my spouse on the spot, but sometimes I get judged by him when I'm just kind of being. Um, so the Soul Rest series has given me this space of um, I'm enough. Um, and being right here right now, doing absolutely nothing or listening to my breath is enough. Um, and as a child of God, I deserve that. Amen. Thank you, Danielle. Yeah, that's real. That's real. Uh, anybody else? Daniel? Okay. I think for me the biggest thing is just realizing that, like, the whole time construct thing of just thinking about the fact that, like, how would our world be different if we didn't have light bulbs? Like, it would just, it would just change the rhythms of our life, just that one tiny little detail. And like how you were talking about just, we make all these things and divide all the days. And again, I think there's healthiness to that. And I think there's can be an idol in that. So yeah. Love it. Thanks, Daniel. Chelsea. I think for me, it was learning how to quell that finger itch, that instant gratification, pick up your phone, have something there to entertain you, but it really just drains you. And learning how to just ignore that and be, and learning how, how energized I feel just not having something constantly take away my attention and learning how to be in the creation and be with God and actually listening to him instead of being like, okay, God, talk to me, but I'm gonna scroll on Instagram for 45 minutes. So if you have something big to say, better be louder than my phone. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. I second that. I, I've been telling you, I've been started fasting from social media uh, the Saturday before the election, and I was going to do it until that Thursday, and I've just kept on going because it's been beautiful. <laughs> I'm not sure what my relationship with social media will be like in the future, but right now, uh, it, it, will be, it will be different. I know that. It'll be very different. So, anybody else? <laughs> I'm not going to make Mario share. <laughs> He'll leave us forever. <laughs> we can't have that. These are, these are wonderful. Anyone else? One more? Going once? All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. We'll turn my mic back on. So uh, we're just going gonna, gonna to walk through some of the Lord's Prayer, and I, and I want us to kind of do it in an experiential way this morning. Before I do, just a, a, a quick little background on the Lord's Prayer. You know, it is in Scripture twice. So it's in Scripture in Luke 11, uh, starting in verse 2. And then what we're most familiar with is the one up on the screen. And that is in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, and that's in Matthew 6 and starting in verse 9. And uh, right off the bat, again, I, I'm not, um, I think it's great to memorize the Lord's Prayer. I think it's great to have the stuff, you know, embedded into us and, to, and even to do the liturgy. And there's a beautiful thing to that. But I think it is important to, to note that, um, that when Jesus was asked about this prayer in Luke 11, his disciples, in verse 1, they say, Lord, teach us to pray. 
just as John taught his disciples. So this, that's a big question. If you could ask Jesus, Jesus, um, teach me to pray. You know, when you want to know, you want to know his answer. I think his answer was bigger and broader than just memorize th- these lines. You know, memorize these lines. That in these lines is like a gold mine. Each one is a gold mine that we're meant to sit with and and pray out in this way. This is how you should pray. Um, and so, even the fact that they're in the scriptures twice, they're not the same. So, you know, we're not, like, it wasn't a magical thing to say, is what I'm saying. It's not a magical s- set of lines that you're supposed to say because, hey, they're, they're in there twice, and Luke wrote it one way, and Matthew, you know, wrote it another way. Um, but as we go through these lines, it starts, we'll do the Matthew 6 version, um, it starts with this line, Our Father in Heaven. And I'll read through the whole thing, and then we'll go through each line. Our Father in Heaven, this is the NIV, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And I want to go through each line, and in doing this, I want us to have an experience with the Lord this morning in prayer, but I also want you to have this as a tool you can take with you. For your time when you're on the river, for your time when you're going to bed at night, or you're getting up early and you're going to spend some time with the Lord, I want this to be another spiritual practice that you can take with you. You can open the Lord's Prayer and then allow it to expand. So, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We don't use the word hallowed ever. We don't really know what that means. I mean, how many times have you said the Lord's Prayer? You have no idea what the word hallowed means. So it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for you, right? So we need to slow down and let this prayer do something to us. Uh, one way of seeing the word hallowed is the word center, that our Father in heaven, may your name be, may it be central. May it be center in my life. So think about that as an approach to prayer right from the jump, right? Our Father, we could talk about just God being our Father, for a long time. We could just sit with that. But that his name would be center in our life. Whose name is normally center in our life? Our name, right? Center being we make our decisions for us, uh, our, our lifestyle choices for us, our priorities for us. We talked about that last week, the priority of our time. You know, don't tell me what you care about. Show me your calendar. You know, show me the way you spend your time. Um, We talked about that being used, you know, around money in churches. Like, don't tell me the things you care about. Show me your, show me your bank statement. That'll show, you know, what you care about. So this prayer that when we pray, think about if every time we prayed, we started, whether it was how we said it or in our heart or, but we started by saying, God, Father, Father who loves me, Father who adopted me, May your name be central in my life. May the decisions that I make be for you. May they honor you. May I rest in your love as my father, your your love that approves me, your love that makes me whole. I'm whole in you. Now let me orient my life around you instead of around me. Can you guys feel some of that? And how different that is than how we normally pray. So when Jesus is asked, how should we pray, this is what he's talking about. So what I want to do, and we're going to just do this as we go through, uh, as we go through the Lord's Prayer, um, I want you to have time to pray in this way. We're just going to be silent. We're not going to um, put you on the spot or anything like that. Um, I would invite you. It's just going to be, I'm not sure. It might be a minute. I'm not sure. It's just going to be some silence. I'll give you some guidance as we go. Um, to quiet yourself before the Lord. And I'm just going to read our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I invite you to take some time to pray that God's name would be center in your life. And perhaps ask God, ask the Spirit, where is your name not centered in my life? Where do I need to make your name center in my life? The whole time remembering he's your Father, he loves you. You're his beloved child, and he's well pleased with you. So let's just take a moment in prayer. So you can close your eyes, you can open your hands, you can do whatever you feel comfortable with in prayer um, to pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name.
God, help us to rest in your love as our Father. Help us to remember that you are the perfect Father who loves us perfectly. That your love could heal the wounds that our earthly fathers and earthly mothers have caused us. That your love would replace any lies that we're telling ourselves or that we've been told about ourselves. May your name be center in our lives, Father. Show us where your name has not been center in our life and where, where we've been center. And show us how to make those changes, how to honor you, how to worship you, how to exalt you as hallowed. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Amen. You could spend time with that one line for an hour. It's beautiful. You're not getting one spiritual practice this morning. You're going to get about five because each of these lines is just has infinite space, I think, that the Holy Spirit can work in us. The second line of the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If I were to cast vision to churches in America, churches in the United, or around the world, uh, Mosaic Church, I think this is the only verse we need for that vision. I mean, there's others we can certainly use, but this is the only verse we need for that vision. If you're like, I don't know what to pray for, this one verse will give you about a million and a half things to pray for. So check this out. We're praying that God's kingdom, again, it's our Father's kingdom. He's a king. He has a kingdom. First, we're hallowing his name. So he's the king, not us, right? We're not the king or queen. He is. So that's the first part of the prayer. God, you be central. You be king. Now, I'm going to pray that your kingdom comes, that your will is done where? On earth. Think about that prayer as it is in heaven. So I want you to use your imagination and think about what are things like in heaven? In heaven, think about the things that are there and think about the things that aren't there. I'm not talking about uh, pearly gates or roads of gold or whatever. <laughs> what I'm talking about is in heaven, there's no brokenness. Right? I mean, there's no brokenness in heaven. So what does God's kingdom look like? It's a place where there's no hunger. It's a place where there's no violence. It's a place where there's no poverty. It's a place where there's no racism. It's a place where there's community. There's a, it's a place where there's love. And get this, there's no lost people in heaven. Everyone knows Jesus. Everyone is in the family of God in heaven. Now picture that place coming here. Picture heaven in Grand Rapids. Picture heaven in your workplace. Picture heaven in your marriage. Picture heaven in your family. Picture God's will. What is God's will? Read the Bible. 
There's no poverty. There's no violence. There's, there's justice. There's freedom for prisoners. There's freedom for the oppressed. People are in relationship with Jesus. They've been forgiven. They're forgiving others. They're, they're learning that God forgives me so I can forgive others. There's wholeness. We're not harming other people. We're giving life to other people. Do you see how we could pray this every day for about a million things? God, that your kingdom, the way things happen in heaven, your will, the way things happen in heaven would happen here in my life. And that he has chosen you. When Jesus says, this is how you should pray, he's chosen you as his special agent He's chosen you as his ambassador, Corinthians tells us. You're you're his representative of what? Of heaven. You're his representative of God's will, the way things happen, the way he wants things to happen, the way he wants people us to treat each other, both on an individual level and on a systemic level, that we are a part of how do we make these relations. The brokenness of this culture is very broken. We live in a very unequitable, unjust society. What does it look like for us to be agents of heaven in the midst of that? What does it look like for us to help shape this place into heaven? That'll change your life. That'll change your mission. I mean, that'll change your purpose for living. It'll change your church. So what we're going to do next is the same thing. We're going to go into prayer with this prayer. And we're going to ask God. I want you to ask God what that looks like in your life. What's beautiful is it's going to look a little different in every one of our lives because we each have a little bit different sphere of influence. What does it look like for you to, to help shape your sphere of influence into heaven, into God's will? This is an amazing challenge from him. So let's go back into prayer, and I'll pray this line, and we'll have silence as you pray and spend time and let the Spirit show you what this prayer looks like in your life. Father, may your kingdom come. May your will be done here on earth, in Grand Rapids, in my family, in my relationships, in my marriage, with my children, with my neighbors, with the poor, with the foreigner with the stranger, the alien, with the oppressed, with the lost. May your will be done here like it is in heaven. God, we pray for peace and restoration in our cities. We pray that guns would be traded in for plowshares, as Scripture says, as we traded in for Bibles, <laughs> would be traded in for gardening tools to grow and to share. God, we pray for forgiveness. We pray for economic justice and development. In, our, in, our, in the cities across our country, in the inner cities, in the urban core. We pray for app- opportunity and access. Lord, we pray for immigrants and refugees who are suffering and struggling. Show us how we can be agents of heaven agents of your will, of what, that, that this earth could look like heaven. We pray for your restoration in our 
marriages and in our families and our relationships with our parents and our relationships with our children. Lord, humble us. May we forgive as we've been forgiven. Ephesians 4, 32, forgive as Christ Jesus has forgiven you. Lord, may we be overwhelmed in this moment with your forgiveness for us. May, re- may relationships be restored. May we share the gospel with those we know and those we don't know. May we see it as our, part of our mission to bring your kingdom here, that there's no lost people in heaven, <laughs> to let people know the good news of Jesus. And in this quiet moment, show each of us steps we can take to be your agents, to be part of this amazing, world-changing work that you are about. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Give us today our daily bread. I'll go a little faster here. Um, I love the phrase daily bread. We have to remember this was an agrarian culture. They did not have refrigerators. They did not have deep freezers. They did not have grocery stores. They did not have preservatives. Good for them. (laughs) You literally had to find what you were going to eat that day. Give us today our daily bread. And there's a dual prayer here. We are praying for those that still don't know where their next meal is going to come from. This is part of our daily prayer. This is how we are to pray. And there's also God's provision. Bread is provision. Bread is how he nourishes us. We get bread at the communion table from Jesus' body. I don't want my daily bread, you guys. I want my yearly bread. I want my bread for the next decade, right? Think about all the things you stress about, all the things you worry about, all the securities that are shaking. Where's the provision going to come from? And God says, here's your bread for today. Here's a lamp unto your feet. Not the for the whole journey, just for the next step. That is very difficult prayer, isn't it, to pray? So Jesus says, pray that every time you pray. Give us our daily bread. What about tomorrow's bread? No, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about tomorrow. It'll take care of itself. That's also Matthew 6. Give us our daily bread. Let's move into prayer on this one. Quiet yourself before the Lord. Give us today our daily bread, Lord. Spend some time with him on what that means in your life, what that looks like in your life. Where he's calling you to trust him. Where is he reminding you of his faithfulness? Where is he showing you that he is enough, that he is your bread? He's the bread of life. He is enough. He fills your stomach. He satisfies you. Give us today our daily bread. Amen. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. This is a powerful passage. If you read this and the the verses that are right after it in Matthew 6, 
Um, we like to skip over those, um, verses 14 and 15. They say that we will be forgiven if we forgive those who sin against us, and if we don't forgive others uh, their sins, we will not be forgiven. That'll mess with your theology, <laughs> but it's right there. It's, it's, it's what follows the Matthew 6 Lord's Prayer. Um, I, I think this shows us how important, how essential it is that we forgive others. First, with how we've been forgiven. This is our daily prayer. Forgive us where we sinned against you, God. Remind us of your forgiveness as we also have forgiven our debtors. It's, it's, we've already done it. Now, I know forgiveness doesn't, isn't that easy. So what does it look like in our daily prayer to ask God, these people are really hard for me to forgive. I know you command me to. Will you help me let go? Will you help me forgive them? Let the vengeance be yours, God. The vengeance isn't mine, it's yours. Romans 12 talks about that. It's not up to us to get them back. We give them to God. And for our part, we forgive. It doesn't mean you ought to be best friends with them. It doesn't mean you have to put yourself in unsafe situations. But to let go of the vengeance that we're carrying around, it's only harming us as we reflect on how we have been forgiven. Let's take a few moments to pray this before God. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Ask God to show you people that you need to forgive. Ask for his help to, to let them go, to just give them to God, that, that he will bring justice, vengeance, repentance, whatever, whatever he has in store, but it's not your job. Let that be his job. And ask him for forgiveness, which he gives freely. He gives in abundance to you for the ways you and I have sinned against him today, this week. Name those things before him and experience the freedom of his forgiveness. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Sorry to have to kind of rush through these last ones. I, I hope you can take these into your time with the Lord today, tomorrow, and spend more time with him. This is the last one. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. There is an evil one, Satan. Uh, I don't know how all of it works, but I know he's after us, and I know prayer is our weapon. Deliver us from the evil one. Lead us not into temptation, our daily prayers to, to, to give God our temptations and to pray for deliverance from Satan, deliverance from his temptations, deliverance from, deliverance from the spiritual warfare that's out there. And in this, to, to be real and, and even to ask God, um, what does it look like for me to conquer these temptations in my life? I can't do it alone. What, is, what next steps do I need to take? I can't do it alone. I need you to lead me not into temptation, God. What does it look like for me to take those next steps? So we're going to finish out um, here with, the, with each line. We'll give you a few minutes uh, with this, or a few moments, I should say, with this one. Um, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let's pray. Lord, we give you our temptations. 
I'm just going to name some because this is what this, this prayer is real. It's about we want to, we, we, we rebuke Satan and his, 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 his lies in our life. And, and for those who, who are tempted by pornography, Lord, lead us away from the temptation of pornography. For those that are, have the temptation of lust, lead us away from the temptation of lust, the temptation of, of fantasy, God, uh, to um, desire someone other than our spouse. For singles, um, to, to desire, uh, you know, in a sexual way, someone that's not our spouse because we're not even married yet. Lord, lead us away from these temptations. These are real Lord, lead us away from the temptation of money and greed and power. Lead us away from the temptation of making our life about us. Lead us away from the temptation of, of anger and, and acting out in violence in our words against our spouse and against our kids and against those we care about. Lead us away from that temptation, Lord. Deliver us from the evil one. Lead us away from the temptation if we have a substance abuse um, addiction that we, we rely on, if it's a drug or if it's alcohol abuse. Lord, lead us away from that temptation and towards you, Father. Back to being our daily bread. Back to being center in our life. Deliver us from the evil one and into your arms to provide all that we need. Amen. We'll put uh, the whole Lord's Prayer back up here and we'll, uh, we'll uh, have you read it once as uh, a prayer. Um, and as you read each line, think about what God spoke to you on each of these lines. And then we'll uh, move into communion in our final worship song. Um, so we're going to pray it aloud. I am not good at leading things, being read aloud, so bear with me. So uh, well, let's read this version that's on the screen. I know there's different versions. Okay, let's read together and prayerfully. This, uh, the, the first line is Jesus, so you can skip that. There we go. Thanks, Alan. All right, let's start with our Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen.